Hi, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Ben. And together we are 15 Degrees North. Today we're going to show you the sights and sounds of Yorkshire. Yorkshire is England's largest county, sitting on its north east coast. It includes the cities of Leeds, Bradford, Sheffield and Hull, as well as the ancient city from which it gets its name, York. Lovingly known as God's own country by the locals, we stand on its coast in Saltburn by the sea. Until the mid-19th century, Saltburn was a small hamlet of cottages run by smugglers. But that was until Henry Pease, a local MP and businessman, saw a vision of a town up on the hill, told his rich relatives, and they decided to make this dream a reality. You what? They built the town just because he dreamed it? Exactly. Well, I had a dream about a swimming pool in our garden. Just saying. Next, we head south to this gorgeous fishing village which is renowned across England as one of its prettiest. Its most famous resident was one Captain James Cook, the renowned explorer who became the first European voyager to land in Eastern Australia, the first to circumnavigate New Zealand and the first to land on Hawaii. Back in 1745, aged 16, Cook worked in a grocer's shop here, but would apparently stare out to sea longing to see what was beyond the horizon. It reminds me of us, really. Although, I wouldn't say no if someone offered me a seaside cottage here. For the French, saying the TH next to an S is notoriously difficult, isn't it, Jeremy? Yes. Can you say staves for me, please? Staves? Staithes. It's not that bad actually, Staithes. With an S at the end, Staithes. 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 Well, you're actually quite lucky because <laughs> this isn't actually pronounced Staithes, it's pronounced Steers. Steers. There you go, perfect. Okay. James Cook moved to Whitby in 1747. This long-established port proved a much happier place for a boy with dreams of travelling the seven seas because, well, it enabled him to go and sail the seven seas. He joined the merchant navy and learned seamanship here before climbing steadily through the ranks. Though his illustrious career would literally take him all over the world, his greatest voyages were aboard a boat built in the shipyards of Whitby. The famed HMS Endeavour. The arrival of the railway in the mid-19th century turned Whitby into one of England's tourist hotspots. And this was only compounded by horror writer Bram Stoker, who set his now legendary novel Dracula right here. Hang on, I thought Dracula was set in Transylvania. Bits of it are, but most of the book is set here, and Dracula actually comes to Whitby on a boat in the later part of the book. Dracula, here, in Yorkshire. Yep, that's why you'll see little Dracula-related boutiques all over the town. Up on the hill above the harbour, you have to make the effort to climb the 199 steps up to Whitby Abbey, the ruins of the Benedictine Monastery that was sacked in the Reformation but still dominates the skyline. When staying in Yorkshire, why not stay in a gypsy caravan? Jeremy, what are you cooking? Cabonara. Robin Hood's Bay is our final stop on the Yorkshire coast before we head inland. This is the point that you tell me that the village has nothing to do with Robin Hood now, isn't it? 
actually no. What? There's an old legend that says that Robin Hood, the famed English outlaw who robbed from the rich and gave to the poor, encountered some French pirates, stole their booty and returned it to the village it had been stolen from. The village is now called Robin Hood's Bay. Why do the bad guys always have to be French? Excuse me. Though York was founded by the Romans, it really became a thing under the Vikings. A trip to the Jorvik Centre will take you on a journey back through time to when the Scandinavians set the city on its path to greatness. In the Middle Ages, York essentially became the capital of Northern England, but it had long been an important city, with the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great proclaimed Emperor right here. Conquered by Ivor the Boneless in 866. The fit one from Vikings. Uh, hang on, stop. You can't describe him as a fit one from Vikings. There's Ragnar and Bjorn. We named our cat after Rollo, for goodness sake, because he's a handsome cat and we needed a handsome person to name him after. So Ivar conquered York, named it Jorvik, and established a Viking capital in the region that would last until after the Norman conquest. Ivar's probably fourth on the list of the fittest Vikings, actually fifth under his brother Uber. You've really thought about this, haven't you? Anyway, York became such an important place that one of the sides of the infamous War of the Roses was the House of York. Did they win? Well, yes and no. They succeeded enough to have three kings on the throne, but eventually they lost to Henry Tudor. Regardless of their defeat, York's importers eventually saw the construction of York Minster, one of Britain's finest cathedrals. Next, we're in West Yorkshire, visiting Hebden Bridge. A favourite amongst lesbians. And Haworth. A favourite among librarians. What about lesbian librarians? Well, all are welcome here because Haworth was famously the home of the Bronte sisters, where you can now find the Bronte Parsonage Museum, where Charlotte wrote Jane Eyre, Emily wrote Wuthering Heights, Anne wrote the tenant of Winfell Hall, and their brother Branwell, well, was a drug addict. Lovely. <sighs> It's me, your captain, come home. So call let me in at your window. Salt Air was built by a man called Titus Salt, and building this uh, village was his greatest achievement. We have a cat called Titus, and his greatest achievement was when he ate our Christmas turkey on Christmas Eve. No trip to Yorkshire would be complete without a trip to Betty's Tea Rooms in Harrogate. Book early to avoid disappointment. We didn't book early, so we did not successfully avoid disappointment. Yorkshire may be littered with landmarks, but it's probably most beloved for its countryside. It has two national parks within it, the North York Moors and the Yorkshire Dales. The latter is a kind of British picture-perfect countryside that's idolised around the world, that's green and luscious and absolutely quintessentially English. So, what is a dale? Well, it's an open valley. Isn't that a glen? Yes, if you're in Scotland, although you can have dales in Scotland too. Can a dale also be a glen? Well, no. So what's a fell? Well, that's the side of a dale. So what's the bottom of a dale? Well, it's a river. Oh, it's very simple. About as simple as the Viking's fit list. Tish.
Newpen is an oft-overlooked corner of Yorkshire that's well worth your time. Especially if you combine a trip with its famous neighbour, Fountains Abbey. Founded in 1132, Fountains grew to become the largest and wealthiest Cistercian monastery in England. In medieval England, the monasteries were powerful landowners whose authority was deemed more important than the king's. So when Henry VIII, a man known for wanting to always be top dog, was challenged by the church, his response was to dissolve the monasteries, claim their wealth, into the privy purse and send the monks packing. This is the reason why abbeys in England are always in such a sorry state. Although you must admit that Fountains looks gorgeous, even if it is in ruins. Well, that's partly because the land it sits on was owned by successive aristocratic families that lived in nearby Fountains Hall and treated the abbey as an elaborate architectural curiosity at the bottom of their garden. <laughs> The final stop on our tour is Bridgerton. Well, no, no, it's not. It's Castle Howard. Which is where Bridgerton was filmed. True, and it's also where Brid's Head Revisited was filmed too, if we're being technical. One of England's most beloved stately homes, Castle Howard was the home of the Carlisle branch of the Howards, one of England's biggest and most influential aristocratic families. Construction began in 1699, and the building is in the rare English Baroque style. The style is so rare that most of the buildings that are an example of it are by the same architect, John Vanbrugh, who designed both this and Blenheim Palace. Isn't St Paul's Cathedral English Baroque too? True, but Christopher Wren, its architect, was BFFs with Vanbrugh. And Radcliffe Camera in Oxford? A different BFF. And Chasworth? Another BFF. Vanbrugh hung out with all of them. The point is, the style was short-lived. Which is a shame, really, because it's a gorgeous style. A large portion of the house is still inhabited by the Howards' descendants today, but the house spent 20 years in the 20th century without a dome following a fire in 1940. Thankfully, the dome was restored and the house is still looking as gorgeous as the day Van Berg and his chums built it. Yorkshire is a gorgeous county that's packed with things to see and do. This video is a lot longer than we intended, but that's more of a compliment to Yorkshire than a reflection on my editing ability. Or maybe it's a little bit of the latter, if we're honest. Okay, I guess that's fair. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. And follow us on Instagram at 15 degrees north. Make sure to tune in to our next video to see where in the world we end up next. See ya. Bye. <laughs>